Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to the final episode of our run here on Construction Simulator 2 on the PS4. Uh, now, the audio commentary is going to be a little bit different for this episode because, unfortunately, for some reason, my microphone didn't record any audio for this clip and the next one as well, so I've kind of mashed them together to make one final hour-long episode uh, with uh, re-recorded audio over the top. So... Uh, it'll sound a little bit different to how we've been doing this before because I'm trying to remember kind of the things that I talked about and obviously commentate on something by watching it rather than actually doing it. So it'll be a little bit strange. But as you can see, we are uh, applying some more concrete here, trying to get this foundation base uh, nice and complete. Uh, once we've got that done, we can then move on to the next stage of the job. Uh, so you can see we're just uh, moving the arm around, trying to... Uh, get as smooth a coverage as possible uh, as you know I, I like to try and get into all those little nooks and crannies uh, especially around the edges uh, just to me it just looks a little bit nicer uh, rather than having those little splodges around the edge where you can't quite get everything in there just it looks it looks better it is the way I feel about it which is why I always try and do it that way just a little readjustment here and there just get that little bit in the corner there we go Drift across. Okay, so big chunk done there. Just need to kind of get the rest of this section done. We stretched the crane out. Uh, still a little funky with the controls every now and again with the uh, you know, with the concrete pumps. The arm sometimes can be a little bit tricky depending on how far the extension is and what angle you've got the arms at. Uh, but once, you, once you've used it for a few moments, you kind of get used to it again. Uh, and there we go. We have completed the task. And uh, gained another one of these uh, infinite levels. Seeing as we've now hit you know, the maximum level of 20, we just get these uh, uh, ad infinitum levels popping up whenever we hit an, ob an objective or uh, an XP kind of thing. So now we need to take a trip over to the steelworks. We need to go and get some steel beams. Uh, so uh, let's uh, get this folded up and out of the way first of all. Uh, we may well need to do a little bit more uh, concreting later on. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so uh, rather than getting rid of it, we'll just kind of move it out of the way. Uh, and you can see there the blue boxes uh, indicating where we need to drop off those uh, steel beams. Let's jump into the concrete mixer. Get the uh, chute folded up. There we go. And we'll just park this in this bay over here, trying to avoid crashing into any more parked cars. It's something that... <laughs> something I've done a lot of in this car park is just knock into vehicles. Right, so uh, we need to get some stuff out to enable us to uh, transport the uh, relevant bits of equipment. First off, let's go into our motor pool. Uh, looking for our Mac Titan. There it is. So we'll retrieve that. And we're going to need the flatbed as well. We'll go with the really long, low loader. That'll be the easiest thing to do. Oh, we can see that actually needs to be repaired. So we'll stick that into our uh, hall so we can fix it. Give it a little bit of a tune-up. It's going to cost us uh, a couple of grand there to fix. And now that we've done that, we can bring that... I keep pressing the wrong controls, as you can see, switching to the wrong thing. But now we can bring that back out of the vehicle hall uh, and then get that hooked up to our Titan. Make our way over to the steelworks. So we're we switching vehicles. There we go. Of course, the steelworks is right next door, so there's no need for us to teleport our way over there. It's just as just as easy to literally just drive around the block and, and get in there. And will save us the fee that we'd be charged for teleporting. Even that short distance, literally going across the street like that, we would get charged a fee. Uh, and the footage is jumping a little bit. I've just noticed that. 
Uh, not quite sure why. Uh, this is one of those kind of periodic problems that seems to happen on PlayStation when you're recording. Is every now and again, the footage will just skip a little bit. And I've noticed it on a couple of videos recently, so maybe I need to defrag my PS4. Go swing the corner. Got to be careful not to clip the taxi. Nope, nope. We caught it. <laughs> the back of this trailer does skip out so much. Makes it really tricky. So, uh, we're here at Steelworks. Let's jump inside to see what we actually need. Not just for this particular task, but for the whole mission. Uh, and it's just these steel beams. These, uh, these packs of four steel vertical beams. So we'll grab those. Uh, we'll auto-load those onto the back of our trailer. There we go. And let's get those strapped down. Oh, we've pressed the wrong option. I keep forgetting to strap yourself down. You need to be on the trailer itself, not in the Titan tractor. I keep making that mistake. It's from what goes back to when we had our very first flatbed truck. Uh, and the, op the option to tie cargo down was in that because it was all one piece of equipment. This is obviously two separate bits. So I keep forgetting that when we want to tie cargo down, we have to do it while on control of the low loader itself, not the actual truck. So we're going to whiz our way through here, running the red lights. Uh, the red light trophy that we were talking about a few episodes ago is a bit temperamental. It's a bit buggy. It's supposed to be run through two traffic lights in 15 seconds but it seems to be a little bit bugged uh, there you can see we've gone through three and it did actually just ping the trophy for me as you can see we got three done all in very quick succession uh, I, I think it's either a typo in the description or uh, it needs to be um, or it's just bugged one of the two um, but for whatever reason if you try and do just two red lights in 15 seconds it just doesn't seem to work uh, so that's, oh, here we go, just smashing vehicles out of the way here. Uh, if you want to try and get that trophy, um, then that section of track just there of road is actually pretty decent. If you can time it right, uh, another really good place is back at Desert Springs, our starting location. The, man, uh, the main drag along there, uh, if you, again, you've got to get the timing right, but uh, you can run through three or four sets of traffic lights before they, they change again. And if you time it just right, then you can get the trophy in that location there as well. So we're here, uh, let's uh, get these steel beams off the back of the flatbed and uh, into their designated box. Switch over to the hook camera so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And just swing around to where the low, uh, the low loader is. And if I thought about it, I would have parked the low loader a little bit closer, actually, to where we needed them to be, just to save a little bit of time in terms of uh, moving things around with the crane. But uh, never mind. We live and learn. So I'll get this swung around. Luckily, we're not going to have to kind of pivot these too much. They're pretty much already facing the right direction to get these uh, into those sort of blue boxes quite quickly and easily. Just a little bit of a tweak will be needed. So we rotate the crane around just in a little bit. There we go. Get that lowered into position. Oops, a little bit off. There we go. That's the first one done. So swing the crane back around. Let's grab the next one. And you can see it's quite a bit of a, a long swing with the crane. Uh, it's not just bringing the crane round direction-wise, but also bringing the hook in towards the base of the crane as well. Uh, which kind of slows things down just a little bit. Just trying to get lined up. There we go. So that one's hooked. I 
and I decided to drive the uh, product over rather than having it delivered because last time we had it delivered it turned up in completely the wrong location where we couldn't actually reach it with the crane and had to then go and manually load it onto a trailer to then move around the corner where we could actually access it with the crane. It's just a mess. So rather than run the risk of that happening again, I figured let's just stick it on a flatbed and get the equipment where we need it. So there's our second uh, pallet of uh, steel beams. I say pallet, it's uh, just a load of beams just tied together, really, isn't it? But that's the second bunch of beams. Time for number three. There we go, hooked up. And swing it around again. And get this one rotated and lowered into position. we go. So just one last pack of beams to retrieve. The crane can be quite slow to operate sometimes when you're trying to do both direction and distance at the same time. And there we go. That's the final beams hooked. Ooh, a bit of a wild swing on that one there. We need to push the beams out a bit, extend the crane's reach. There we go. Give it a little bit of a turn. Rotating them round and drop them down. And there we go. That is the beams delivered. Task complete. So, what's next? Uh, place the following objects at their target locations. Okay. So, where are they? Uh, let's pan the camera and have a look. Ah, there we go. So, we've got uh, a few beams lying in the middle there for us to hook onto. And then some blue vertical beam markings. Try and reposition the camera a little bit. Zoom in as well, make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. And uh, scroll down a bit with the camera, or with the with the crane control. There we go, it's the first one hooked. You can see as we swing the crane at a uniform sort of uh, distance, you can actually pick up quite a bit of speed. The beam really sort of dragging out behind us there. So where should we uh, where should we start in the far corner? Yeah, right in this nearest corner to us. Let's try and get things positioned right. Rotate the camera around as well, just to make it a little bit easier with the crane controls. Almost there. Let's wait for it to turn green. There we go. And that's the first beam placed. So three more to do in this little area here. Uh, there's a lot of beams in the centre though. Uh, we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more beams left. So we're going to get another four of these popped up somewhere once we've done these first ones. Uh, and then... I think it's four beams to a box as well, which suggests that once these eight beams in total have been placed, we'll have another eight to place somewhere else as well. So we could be in the crane for a little while yet. Okay, there we go. It's the second one hooked. And you can see the sun is starting to rise. You can see the shadows receding over the construction site there. That should make it a little bit easier for us to see what we're doing as well as the day brightens up. Uh, 
And there we go. That's beam number two. And the third one is hooked. Raise that up. At least with all these beams lying flat on the ground, we can't play dominoes like we did uh, on a previous job where we accidentally knocked everything over and <laughs> they all tumbled on top of each other. There we go, number three. Nice and straightforward. So one more in this little section uh, and then we'll get some more beams popping up for us. Or some more beam locations. Obviously we still have those beams there waiting to be placed. And that's the fourth beam. Keeping this one a little bit lower. Now we need to pull the crane in towards us a bit more. There we go. Just reposition slightly. Drop it down, and there we go. Task complete. Now we need to place the following objects at the next location. So where are those? Ah, there they are, opposite side. So we can reposition our camera again just to make things a bit easier for us. So we can actually see what we're doing. And these ones should hopefully be pretty quick and easy for us to reposition. So get that first one hooked. It doesn't matter which order we take these beams from. You know, They're all going to be positioned in one of these four spots. So we can take from whichever one we want to whichever one of these locations we want. As long as all four beams get placed in all four spots, it doesn't really matter what order we do this in. But I like to work furthest away and work back towards myself. I just find it a bit easier, especially when you've got uh, beams positioned like that. If they're in the way as you're rotating the crane, then it's just another obstacle for you to overcome. So if you're placing them further away first, then when you move the crane back for the next one, you haven't got an extra obstacle to try and move around or, or negotiate your way past uh, on your way to delivering the, you know, what it is you're trying to deliver. It's just you know, common sense in that respect. So if we delivered here in the middle, for example, we would have to worry about maybe hitting that as we moved across with this beam. And of course, we don't have that problem by working furthest away inwards. So that's two of the beams done. Let's see what comes next after these are placed. I would imagine more, more steel beam work. Get that lifted up. Swing around. There we go. And just one more to place. Okay, there we go, we're nice and hooked. Kind of swing around. Oops, gone a bit too far, a bit too low. Pull it back in a bit. There we go. Task complete. Excellent stuff. Oh, that's built up a lot of scaffolding. Uh, and you can see straight away, there's our blue guidelines. We've got, is it three there? Oh, hook's caught on something. Uh, there's three beams there. So there must be another one somewhere. Oh, there it is, on the other side. Oh, there's two there, look. So, is that five beams we've got to place? You can see them all lying down on the courtyard there. Maybe it's not four beams per pack. Or maybe we're going to have another beam job after this one. Let's see. Actually hooking these ones uh, horizontally this time. 
Oops, oh, we knocked it over. Never mind, it's not a, a big problem. There we go, nice and hooked. Let's see, where should we place this one first? Let's uh, continue in the same area that we were working on before, I think. Oops, I just clipped the frame there. A little bit clumsy. Uh, get lowered in position. And there we go, it's the first one done. So two more to go on this side. Then uh, a couple behind us as well. And as I said, this is the final episode of Construction Simulator PS4 uh, that we're going to be running uh, at least for a while. We may possibly come back and revisit this game again in the future. Uh, but we've, we, you know, we've, we've hit around 50 episodes. I think that's a, a pretty good place for us to kind of bring this to an end. And this is a big job as well. So uh, this is one of the big special jobs. It's a, a natural kind of ending point for us once this job is complete. Uh, plus, we have new stuff coming out soon as well. Subnautica comes out on the 4th of December. Uh, and I do want to see if I can get my hands on a copy of that. Uh, bring that to the channel for you guys. Uh, plus, we have a new DLC for Railway Empire going live very soon as well. And I can't wait for this one uh, because this is set in the UK. It is a Great Britain and Ireland themed DLC expansion. Uh, and it's going to bring in some really iconic uh, British and Irish steam trains. Uh, in particular, uh, two that have been shown off in that is the Gresley A4 Mallard, uh, one of the most famous locomotives, steam locomotives in the world, not just in our country. And of course, another incredibly iconic steam engine, the Flying Scotsman. Both of those will be available uh, to, uh, to play with according to the video which I posted on my Facebook page. Uh, if you want to see the video, then uh, head over to Calypso's YouTube channel. Uh, the announcement trailer is there. And you'll be able to see that in action. And uh, we also have another video trailer coming up soon as well. On December 6th, uh, Truck Driver will be uh, given a gameplay trailer, uh, which will be going live on YouTube. Uh, Sodesco finally made that announcement. And we'll be seeing that and actually seeing some gameplay footage. And hopefully, the gameplay trailer will also include a release date. We still don't know when that game is coming out. It was supposed to be coming out this year, and they went very, very quiet, and now we're into December, and we still haven't heard anything apart from they've just announced this uh, this gameplay trailer. Uh, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we'll get a release date attached to that trailer. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, playing Truck Driver. It'll be the console equivalent, hopefully, of something like American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator. I have my wheel all set up uh, and ready. Uh, I also have... Uh, the shifter attachment for my G29 now. I uh, managed to pick one of those up on sale in Black Friday for about a third off. Uh, so I've got everything I need. I just need the game now so I can do some truck driving. I'm looking forward to that coming out. Uh, so uh, I'll be watching that trailer when it goes live and fingers crossed, as I say, we'll find out a release date at the end of that video. Meanwhile, back to our job here, and you can see that uh, we have some beams that we need to stick on this side now. Uh, getting a little clumsy here as we're swinging back and forth, clipping the frame and missing our mark slightly. Let's raise this one up. Try and get it in that green little activation box. There we go. Placed. Uh, and one beam left to position now. Is that going to be the end of it? Or is there going to be more crane work straight after this as well? I just need to get that hook positioned about right. Can't quite get the angle right. There we go. Get it hooked. And 
let's see if we can be a little bit more careful maneuvering this one. So we'll pull it in towards us before we start swinging around. There we go. Now we're swinging. Pushing out to touch. It's a bit too far, I think. Rotate the crane back around again. Might bring it back in. Oh, perfect. And just lower down carefully. And we're slightly too far out. And yeah, that'll do. There we go. Task complete. So, take the following to its target like how we need to go back to the steelworks. So this must be specialised custom bits of equipment then, because uh, we, we didn't have the option to buy these earlier. So I'm guessing these are very big bits of of, uh, of stuff that you can't naturally buy at the store. This is something that's very, very specific to this job. So let's take the flatbed back over to the steelworks and get those loaded up. We're going to need our crane, I would imagine, to load the, uh, the flatbed as well. Let's just... Uh, onto the road there. See the <laughs> pedestrians just kind of phasing in and out of reality there. And there's us driving past the Shapiro Centre, the Museum of Interesting Things that we just finished. No, that's the Philharmonic. We're doing the Museum of Interesting Things. Uh, that's the Philharmonic that we just finished be building quite recently. Uh, so two very uh, big builds, very, very close to each other. Like next door, effectively. All right. I think that's my home base. Oh, there's the uh, Builders Merchants. I get the feeling we'll have to come there at some point. Oh, can we avoid hitting the taxi? Ooh, just. Very tricky. Now we're just going to cut through the red lights. It's kind of weird. I've noticed this. Uh, I, I, I'm really, really careful about avoiding collisions where I can, <laughs> for the most part. Um, but I, I don't care about the traffic lights, I'll just run straight through them. It's a little odd. Oh, there we go. There's our steel girders. Massive great big things. Look at that. They are looking like the length of our trailer. So, we're going to need to go back into our vehicle inventory. I think I've pressed the wrong button there. Yes, I have. Uh, and again. Uh, here we go, into the motor pool. We need to find our crane. Let's use the really big Lee Bear. Retrieve that. And again, we're so close that there's no point teleporting. We'll just drive around the block and, uh, and get in that way. It's just as easy. It's only marginally slower and it's certainly cheaper. Bring this around here. Ooh, bad, bad understeer there. A little bit too fast into that corner and we just refused to turn. Have to watch out for that. Shouldn't really be speeding all that much in a vehicle this size anyway. So we'll park up just here. Let's get the, uh, the riggers extended. Get the support frames down. There we go. Zoom the camera in a bit so we can see what we're doing. Put it on hook camera. There we go. And let's extend the arm out now so we can hook onto those girders and get them onto the low loader. Just dropping the crane down a touch. Not quite there. There we go. That's the first one hooked. We're going to need to rotate it. want to get this on the side of the trailer nearest to us so again it removes a potential obstacle for the second one uh, and we can uh, just swap that on next to it make it a little bit easier for us so let's bring that across bring it in and drop it down there we go oh that's uh, that's dropped it on the wrong side let's try that again so let's get that hooked back up again. There we go. Pull it across. That's where I wanted it. Just there. 
again, just it makes it easier for us to put the second beam in place. There's, there's nothing in the way that we have to sort of lift over the top of. We can just slot it in right next to that one. So let's get our crane positioned. I think I'm way off target here. Spin the camera around. Oh, yeah, way off target. Look, there we go. We're hooked. Swing this one around. Bring it in a bit. We're going to need to rotate. Change the camera so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Excellent stuff. Right. We're loaded, so I'll see you at the site. And here are our beams at the site. So we need to get these off the back of the truck and into position. Let's get this first one hooked. The size of these things, they're massive. And there's our two spots there. So once again, we're going to need to rotate these around and these are going to kind of form the, the cap on top of the roof frame by the look of it. Excellent stuff. And drop that into position. Right, that's one of them. We've got one more to go. Let's reposition the crane. And hook. There we go. And let's get that rotated round as well. Let's just drop this into position nice and carefully. He says, missing the target. <laughs> there we go. So, task complete. What's next? Oh, more ad infinitum levels. And a nice little payout there of 170 grand as well. Very nice. Uh, we need some glass elements. So, we're off to the builder's merchants now to go and. Uh, pick up some more supplies so we'll use the auto load again rather than delivering them to the site let's get a closer look at the Philharmonic there it is the Shapiro Center we built that we can be proud of that Let's uh, just ride the pavement here, get back onto the main road. That looks obviously like a potential resurfacing job for a future contract. Now I'm just going to run the lights again. Going to be careful on the corner. There we go. And then uh, we can nip into the entrance just here. Is this truck going to turn against us? No, he's gone straight on. We're okay. Oh, oh taxi just suddenly came out of nowhere. Nearly <laughs> nearly clipped that and drove into a bollard trying to avoid it. Just avoided clipping the other one as well as we swung the trade around. So we have arrived, <clears throat> arrived at the merchants. Let's uh, see what we need. Is it just glass or are we going to have multiple pieces to pick up here? Let's have a look. Uh, task for the entire job is again just this one set of equipment so we need three of these there we go we'll get those uh, auto loaded uh, we need to get those strapped down as well there we go a little 
little bit of a gurgle from my stomach there. Sorry about that if the microphone picked that up. I can never tell whether or not, you know, uh, little noises like that do get picked up by the microphone. Sometimes they seem to, other times they don't. And uh, I have been accused of breaking wind on camera <laughs> before, but it's just been a little gurgle or a little creak of the the uh, of the seat rather than, and you know, rather than a fart. But it's strange what the microphone will pick up and what it won't pick up. It always seems to pick up things when you're least aware of it, and when you're fully aware of something, nothing happens. And it lulls you into that false sense of security, so that uh, next time something happens and you're not really all that aware of it, it immediately gets picked up, and everyone goes, "Whoa, strange noises." So, uh, let's see. Can we see where we need to deliver these? Uh, there we go. Let's uh, learn from our mistake from last time. Let's actually get a little bit closer so we can move them off the trailer to the site a little bit quicker. Uh, let's pull forward a bit more so the porter cabin is not in the way. There we go. Crane should still be able to reach here, I think. Let's get these uh, uh, untethered. There we go. And our crane has actually disappeared. Our, our crane at the main site. It doesn't look as though... Yeah, can we actually rebuild that? Oh, no, that's even further away. Um, <laughs> let's try that. And that's even further away still. Uh, let's just move back around to where the crane was and let's see if we can actually put that back. It might be that the site is too developed for the crane now, in which case we will have to bring the mobile crane over. Uh, but let's see if we can re-erect our... Uh, oh, the heck, there's another car. Just destroying everyone's property in this, uh, <laughs> in this car park here. Yeah, that square there, that's where our crane was. Will it let us put it back up again? No, there's no crane site. There is a porter cabin, a little porter potty in the middle of the site, randomly. Um, but nowhere for us to set our crane back up, so we are going to have to jump back into the Lee Bear uh, mobile crane, uh, which we'd parked up there at the steelworks. So we'll take that over. And uh, we'll have to use that to deliver the glass. Still, at least we know it's a pretty quick and straightforward route. We'll uh, avoid the red light by cutting through the builders' merchants, and uh, oh, great! There's a red light on the exit as well. Let's wait for this one. Get our lights on and our beacons on while we're waiting. There we go. Try to avoid hitting anything if we can. Oh, there's that understeer again. Slam the brakes on. Just avoid crashing into that uh, that parked van there. Come on, lights change. Let's creep forward a little bit. Come on, we're gonna get we're gonna get fined. Oh, <laughs> almost completely through the junction, and then the lights change, and we managed to get away without the fine on that one. I'm surprised. Some of those lights, the trigger points, seem to be really, really quick and brutal. You know, just a second of it, you know, just a fraction too far through. Like that one there, look. You know, we weren't too far forward, um, but we were through it while it was changing, and we got fined. Yet the other one, we were almost completely through it, and we didn't get fined. Maybe it's just a speed thing as well. Just uh, ease off on the throttle. Again, slamming the brakes on to avoid... Uh, <laughs> Avoid losing control of that uh, understeer at high speed. Makes this uh, a little unpredictable. And let's get the crane just inside. Just in here. This might make it a little bit easier, hopefully, for us to actually move these uh, glass boxes. So we'll get the uh, support arms out. Move on to the hook camera. 
and let's get these boxes of glass where they need to be. Stretching the arm out. And lower the hook down. There we go, that's the first one. And again, we'll get uh, delivered to the furthest point away, which is that one there. Drop that one off. Yeah, the second box here. A little bit more height. Careful. It is glass after all. Uh, there we go. That's the second one dropped off and uh, positioned. One more to go. Now I've kind of enjoyed this job, but for me, I think my favourite job so far still on this has been building the diner. Bringing lots and lots of parts over and, you know, just that time we spent in the crane and having all those bits of wooden uh, framework for the roof and, and the uh, the walls and the floors, and building all of that bit by bit. That, to me, has been the most fun job so far. I don't know why. I don't know why that, that one job in particular has been more enjoyable than anything. I think it, maybe it's possibly partly because of um, the amount of time we spent in the crane. That was the first really long time we spent in the crane. And there we go. That is done. Uh, need to clear the area. Let's get folded up. Uh, and we've got some more concreting to do as well. So I'll, just as well I didn't reset that equipment back. But yeah, for some reason, I, I, I just found the diner the most enjoyable job. I, I think it's because it was the first time we spent a really long time in the crane. Almost an entire episode just moving things around and dropping off uh, items in different uh, locations and then building up the framework of the building in, in stages. Uh, it was just a very nice, relaxed job to build. I had a lot of fun with that one. A real mixture of everything was in that one. Uh, and who can forget Bernie Butter, that ridiculous mascot as well. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That was... Uh, Interesting, I think, to say the least. So, uh, we'll get ourselves positioned with the pump. There we go. This should be a really straightforward, easy to do job. I'm going to have to basically fill that triangular frame. You can see that red area is where we need the concrete to go. That'll turn green in excavation view. Another vehicle clipped. And another one. Let's just push through if we can. Oh, he's stuck. <laughs> There's another vehicle hit. He's stuck to the front of the truck. Oh, dear. Yeah, we're not going to get a good payout. Right, it's just as well there's no uh, insurance claims in this because otherwise we wouldn't be getting a payout for this job. We'd probably be, uh, you know, losing money through insurance claims and uh, and and uh, and fines and payoffs to stop people from suing. And yeah, not good, <laughs> not good at all. all right, let's get the chute extended. Uh, start pouring some concrete. There we go. Jump back in the pump. Get the arm up. Try 
Try and rotate the camera around so we can see what we're doing properly. There we go. Extend the arm out a bit more now. This could be a little tricky given our proximity to it, but I'm hopeful we should be reasonably comfortable to be able to do this bit without too much issue. Let's start pouring. And there you can see the concrete actually going in and filling up those areas. It's going to need a little bit of a tweak in position. Try and get it in the corner if we can. Or close to it. There we go. Our mixer is almost out of concrete as well. I think we're probably going to have to top that up to finish this job off. Let's see if we can. It's not a lot of concrete that needs to be placed. Let's see if we can actually do this without topping up. Uh, that level's going down too quickly. We're not going to have enough. Let's uh, let's top up the mixer. There we go. And luckily, we don't actually waste concrete like this when we're moving around. I'm just struggling with the crane a little bit. Uh, there you can see the green showing what's done, and the red showing what still needs to be done. Extend out and start working on the opposite side of the triangle now. But we don't lose or waste concrete when we're not pouring inside an area that needs to be poured, which is good. You know, otherwise we'd be losing a fortune in material costs. And you can see that section there is done. don't get to use this kind of excavation view for watching the concrete levels going up all that often because it tends to pivot around the vehicle or equipment that you're using not the target site that you're working on so you can see there it's focusing on the concrete pump it's just because of the position we're at in, pro in terms of proximity to this triangle that's why we're able to see it in this view a lot more than we would normally oh and there we go it's done so let's stop pouring and we need to clear the area. So we need to get this folded. We're going to need to move the cement truck as well. So let's jump into that. And stop pouring. There we go. Pull forward. Just there will be fine. Let's get back in the pump. Move that out of the way. Ah, we've got more concreting to do. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, we've got another triangle to put. So maybe all the way along this front edge we've got more to put in as well. Maybe there'll be one or two more to go in that area as well. So let's set up the pump outside in the car park this time, just in case, so we don't have to keep clearing the area. Let's get the arm unfold, unfolded and swung around a bit, and then we'll reposition the concrete truck so we can keep filling up. Now we need to move the mixer. You get the sense that we've almost done with this job now. Very little left at all, just putting like the finishing touches on the decorative areas. It does look as though the main building itself is now complete. There we go, repositioned. Just give the chute a little tweak and start pouring again back into the pump and hopefully we're going to have the reach without a lot of fiddling around with the arm here to do the vast majority of all of this concrete and there you can see again 
the camera now panning to look at the vehicle rather than the area that we're working on so it, it kind of imme immediately hides the triangular area and there's our monthly accounting thing we've made a good profit this month we have have finished some uh, some big jobs recently no major expenses either which is good no large purchases of equipment Trying to reposition the arm. There we go. I'm trying to raise it with one stick and lower it at the same time with the other stick so we can stretch it out all the way to the far edge. Can we get it in that corner? Just about. There we go. Uh, I thought we were done for a second then. It's not. It's just the floodlights have gone off. So the sun is on its way up again. We should start to see some illumination back on the site again pretty soon. Let's try and get that little patch that we've missed. Just there. There we go. We can start pulling the arm back towards us again now. Work closer to our to our vehicle. Go. Let's bring it in a bit more. This is where it's going to get awkward again now. So we've got to change the uh, change the pivot and the height at the same time. It's going to be a little bit trickier. Getting confused with my controls. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And there we go, task complete. Another couple of ad infinitum uh, points for us. Up to level 6 now. Uh, and yes, look. Oh, it's built the next, the next two for us automatically. Uh, we need to unload bulk. I mean, we need some soil. Interesting. Okay, so let's fold the equipment up, move it out of the way. And I think we'll use our granite truck rather than using the, the large tipper trailer. I think it's just going to be a little bit more uh, important to have that control rather than an articulated uh, body for reversing. So that's that moved out of the way. Let's move the mixer. Get that clear of the entranceway. Stop pumping. Fold the chute up. And we'll just park in these little spaces just there. There we go. So into our motor pool. Let's double checking and see what we need and how many of those we need to fill in. Uh, it looks as though we need to do three of the triangles. And let's find... Our granite truck, where is it? It should be a bit further along. There it is. Let's grab that. And jump in it. And now we need to take this over to pick up the soil. Uh, there isn't a uh, point here in Northridge, is there? Uh, it's going to be uh, on the boundary, I think, of Westgate is where we're going to need to go. Is it Westgate? Yes, it was. And there we go. That's where we need to be. Uh, the gravel pit in Westgate. So let's skip the drive. Good stuff. And let's load up on some soil. Positioned about right. There we go. 
I do like that little fill animation. It just looks really good. I like it. It's very, very simplistic, you know, in terms of the way the soil kind of bulges. But it also actually looks pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just, it's a mixture of simple and complicated in its animation at the same time. And it just seems to work really, really well. Uh, right, let's get back to the job site in Northridge. There we go. Just over eight grand for the soil. It's not too bad. Uh, and which one of these is it we need to fill? Uh, looks like it's one of the ones around the uh, the other end. We have four triangles, but we only have three filled jobs, so maybe one of them will be filled for us. And there we go, you can see the grid lines there indicating the one that needs the soil. This could be tricky, actually, uh, to get it all in there. We might possibly need to bring the excavator up so that we can dump the soil on the ground uh, and then scoop it in bit by bit. Let's uh, see what happens when we dump the soil in. Oh, there we go. That was it. That was that was, that was quick and easy. Uh, we've got way more soil than we think we're going to need for this job. Uh, there's the next one. At least we don't have to uh, to faff around with trying to get uh, soil into really awkward position angles. Yeah, we just need to basically tip it into one part of this and it fills the whole little area for us. That's good. Let's try and square up a little bit, make it a little bit easier. Here we go. And that's that one done. Which one's next? That, on the far end. There isn't really an easy way to, track, uh, to tip to the, the middle one, so I'm assuming that if we tip into this one here, it will actually... Oops. <sighs> yeah, I, like I said, we just destroyed everything in this car park. <laughs> uh, not our best driving this episode, that's for sure. Um, but I'm assuming that tipping in here will automatically do the other one at the same time. So let's let's see what happens. Yeah, task complete. So we clear the area. And there we go. We have built the Museum of Interesting Things. That was a fun little job. I quite enjoyed that. Certainly a big paying job. Let's take a look at our breakdown in just a second. And there is our payoff, uh, 1.068 million uh, in terms of our baseline payout, and then a bonus of 213, nearly 214,000 as well. Uh, a really good XP payout as well, again, with a bonus XP payout. Uh, that was a fun job. That was quite good, and one of the most profitable jobs that we've done as well. Uh, certainly earned an awful lot from that one, including some bonus ad infinitum levels. Master the challenge. So there we go. That is it. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob. I'll be back with something different very soon.